it's uh, this is actually a conceptual question but um what uh, sometimes takes uh, more time and effort for a lot of people is that realizing that even though the question involves numbers that uh, the key distinction here is understanding the concepts not you know figuring out what the right formula to plug it in is and as usual there's a hint link and it's meant to be helpful it links you out to uh, those things and i'll describe all that but uh, that's what the hint is for it now, if I didn't have this video, I want you to read about read that section, paying careful attention to what the net forces is about. And uh, yeah. So, okay, it says in a free fall, a given object accelerates at G, they use approximate value G. It asks how much gravitational force is acting on an object of mass four kilogram in free fall. And when I'm approaching a physics question, uh, it applies for conceptual questions and actual quantitative questions. A lot of the times I find it useful to draw a figure. It helps me think through what information is given in the problem. So I have an object, a given object, which I'm told is in free fall, an uh, object that's uh, four kilograms. And if it's in free fall, what that means is that it's accelerating at, um, at G. So this thing should be accelerating downward with the acceleration of G or 10 meter per second squared. All right. Now it's asking for gravitational force. And this word force is what will trigger me to make me think about force diagram. This is, uh, we call this in my physics four class, free body diagram. Um, it's probably simpler to refer to this as force diagram for the purpose of this class. So what it is, is it's a diagram of all the forces acting on some object. And we try to draw these diagrams very simply. Oftentimes we don't um, draw anything else other than a single dot to represent the object. I might do that in a little bit. Um, and then what, uh, what I use that to illustrate are all the forces. So it's the forces I draw, it's the forces I want to pay attention to. So here it's uh, accelerating downward and the, that acceleration happens because there's a gravitational force pulling it downward. So there's an FG. So, all right, so, uh, and uh, when something's in free fall, that actually explicitly means that gravitational force is the only significant force on that object. So there's another force, gravitational force. So uh, what is the amount of gravitational force? And this is where, you know, if you're just going into your textbook, hunting for formulas, you could easily compute yourself because you'll see Newton's law of universal gravitation and then you'll say, oh, I don't know the mass of the earth and all that. None of that is needed. What you need is Newton's second law. Newton's second law says this, that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Here, the net force is a super simple. Your gravitational force, that is the net force because that's the only force, that's the total of your force. So to figure out this net force, all you need is mass and acceleration. So you have mass, four kilograms, you have acceleration, 10 meters per second squared. So your net force there is four kilograms times 10 meters per second squared or 40 kilogram times meter per second squared. Now, if you go through the units, then you know that kilogram times meter per second squared is Newton, so net force is 40 Newtons. So that should be the answer. Uh, let me just plug that in, demonstrate that that is the answer, and then keep going. Now, having gotten this one right, uh, when it says, uh, oops, uh, if the same object of mass is set resting on a table, what is the magnitude of net force on this object? So this is where you have to be careful. You have to realize, oh, my situation is changing. We are no longer talking about um, this uh, object in free fall. What we are talking about instead is this modified scenario of where um, I 
have a table under this object now. So and let me just draw the picture to make sure I understand all the setup. So there's a table surface underneath and this ball is just sitting there. All right, and uh, you should ask yourself, okay, if that's the scenario, what is the acceleration? And I hope you come to the realization that acceleration is zero here because the ball is at, uh, the object is at rest, zero meter per second velocity, and it stays at that uh, speed. So speed isn't changing, that means no acceleration. So when I draw free body, uh, let's see, I'm gonna move this. When I draw a free body diagram, this is where I have to be a little bit careful. So I'm not gonna draw my forces on top of that. That's gonna make my um, diagram super busy. So what I'll do is I'll draw a simplified version separately. I have this dot representing the object. So there will still be gravitational force, mass times G, which I had, uh, which was involved in A. If this is the only force, then, um, then, um, then, you know, that's a, um, uh, there's an inconsistency here. The diagram you see here says that there should be downward acceleration. But the, um, but the, the acceleration that you know says it should be zero. And that's what actually part C is getting at. And to reconcile that, what you need to have and what you need to realize is that there is an upward force of normal force or support force that is going to have equal magnitude as the gravitational force. And combining these two, you get to the net force equal to zero, and this is now consistent with the zero acceleration. So now you don't, didn't actually have to go through this, you could just use Newton's second law to say that the net force, well, the object is not accelerating, so the net force must be zero, so this must be zero. Let me put that in, verify that that gives me correct answer. Good. And part C is getting at what I was talking about here. Um, so there is gravity, the gravity hasn't gone away. But the reason the net force is zero is because there's a second force. The second force is normal force, more later. <laughs> and this normal force, I, I drew it away so that it adds up to zero. It's in a direction opposite to the gravitational force. It's gonna be upward with a magnitude that's the same as gravitational force. Now, I want to caution you that that won't always be the case. I think I have a lecture video that kind of gets at that. Um, but for this question, it's the same magnitude, so let me just do that. So, okay, now I got everything correct. I got four out of four points for getting one, two, three, four parts correct. So that's it. 